Saved by Grace podcast, bringing you stories of hope, restoration, and God's faithful love. I'm your host, Sylvia Puentes. Hi, and welcome to Saved by Grace. I'm your host, Sylvia Puentes. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with Pastor Gregory Engler. Pastor Gregory is pastor of Day and Night International Ministries, also known as Danny Ministries. And along with his wife, Mary, the pastor of Final Harvest Church in Nagaland, India, where mm-hmm. their mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and feed the hungry. Pastor Gregory, mm-hmm. welcome. Well, thank you very much, my sister. How are you doing? <laughs> Saved by grace. That's a great Amen. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Gregory, um, you have an incredible testimony of really restoration, redemption, the whole thing. So um, why don't you start by taking us on your journey, sharing your, let's say, the your childhood with us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I just want to just share something and then I'll go right into it. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, praise God, his mercy is anew every single morning. Because Amen. of his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, and that was my life, and that's the life of a lot of people that are listening right now. Even when we were dead in sins, covered up and buried, dead in sins, God has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Not by works, not by anything. And then God goes on to say this in verse 6. And God has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, uh, you know, the Word of God says, uh, it it says in verse... uh, uh, 10 that uh, we are his workmanship his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus unto good works God has planned for all of us to do the works of Jesus and greater uh, all of us have gifts and talents and uh, we already the word of God says that he wrote each of our books in heaven before we went into our mother's womb And God had planned and purposed for all of us to be on this planet and to impact those around us for his kingdom, for his good, you know, to help one another. That's why God said, love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor, not be an island, love your neighbor as yourself. So we have power to impact our neighbors. So my, uh, my life uh, I, I was not raised Christian. Um, I was born way over in South America, a place called Caracas, Venezuela, um, back in 1960. And my family, you know, I had no, I actually, I don't have very much memory of, uh, uh when I was growing up, uh, over there. Um, but there was tumultuous, uh, there was a lot of friction and fighting, uh, in my family. My dad was a workaholic, alcoholic at that time. And uh, my, my mommy and dad used to clash, 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 clash. This is what I'm told. And this is what I later remember uh, when I went through some PTSD uh, uh, counseling groups. And God flashed in my memory of all these voices just yelling and screaming at each other. And then I guess the break of the divorce came at the age of six. Uh, my parents divorced, and uh, through pressure and all, my dad uh, retained custody of his two sons, my older brother, one year older than me, and myself. And then he took us to America, uh, to New York, and we stayed with some relatives while he went to uh, uh, some alcohol rehab and started to get his life back on track. So for a period there, oh, by the way, my brother and I only spoke Spanish when we came over. And there, 
we had to learn, you know, hey, everybody around us spoke English. Okay, so we were like the outcasts and people used to make names and all that stuff. And um, so dad disappears, mom disappeared. We have no idea what's going on. We're sort of broken inside. And uh, then we're, we're raising up with our, with our, our cousins and all. And then dad, uh, after some time, I have no idea, but it seemed like ages, uh, he came and got us and began his life uh, with us. And then soon after that, he remarried, and then we started to grow. But somewhere in there, my heart had been hurt. The Word of God says that Jesus heals the brokenhearted. So we have, mm-hmm. we have the ability as uh, humans on this planet to have our hearts broken, not just because we're in love with someone and then they kick us off. You know, but uh, our hearts, what we believe, what we thrive, what we, uh, what we believe, uh, you know, where we're tender, where we, where we're alive, that has uh, the ability to get hurt, okay, and broken. The word of God says fragmented, and uh, but Jesus Christ has the only power to heal it. So, um, but I didn't know any of that stuff, and we were not a, a, a active praying family except when we would take dinner uh, at night. So somewhere by 11 years old, um, my brokenness turned into, well, how can I make myself feel better? I went to drugs, to, to friends that were also broken. We did drugs. We did marijuana, smoking cigarettes, drinking. By 13, I'm selling marijuana. By 15, I'm doing hardcore drugs. And uh, breaking into people's homes for money, things and monies so I can get my addiction uh, satisfied. And uh, somewhere around 17, uh, I hit a wall called the police. (laughs) (laughs) The police. And uh, this, this, uh, this led to my going to court. And uh, my dad, you know, he's my dad and mom, they did their best. Um, trying to uh, help me, and uh, I was going to court, and I was going to psychological uh, uh, counseling, and I'd, I'd get high and go to the thing, and uh, the doctor would be all upset because I was not, uh, you know, I was not going with his program. And uh, yeah. so somewhere in between there, the the attorney mentioned to the judge, you know. Uh, Gregory would like to become and join the Marine Corps and uh, maybe that'll straighten him out and uh, oh good idea so uh, at 19 I entered the Marines and uh, and then that began a six year uh, time of service in the Marines it was good for many 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 counts many points great great uh, uh, great experience uh, however, there's a lot of broken people in the Marines, and I found them. They found me. And uh, after spending some time in uh, combat uh, action in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, 1982, 83, 84, and we did in 83, 84, we did the, the invasion of Grenada um, that had been taken over by uh, communist rebels. Um Somewhere after that, I started having all these nightmares. Uh, we're in firefights, and uh, the enemy is blasting us, and uh, one by one, two by two, friends of mine are dying, and we're running out of ammunition. And I was having those nightly. Uh, mm-hmm. So I to try to bring peace to my life, I went running to the bars, running to drugs, uh, trying to... Uh, just numb out everything and try to block it all out and uh and then i was i mean i was in a major major spiral uh just i didn't know how to stop uh taking drugs i didn't i couldn't see past tomorrow and um i hit another brick wall and this brick wall was a uh, court martial uh they they popped a surprise urinalysis uh, testing on uh, the whole battalion and uh, lots of us were were found to uh, be taking uh, illegal drugs and all, and and uh, I was one of them. And uh, I was a sergeant at the time. And they thought, well, you know, we just end the whole 
uh, drug problem in the Marine Corps if we just put Sergeant Gregory into jail. You know, that was a lie. I was only using a little bit with my friends and uh, with others. That's it. But uh, they painted a bad picture of me. And, you know, has anyone ever painted a bad picture about you? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so there I was in jail. A, uh, the, the, the judge, it was a, uh, it was a courts martial. And um, they took away a few strikes and uh, threw me in jail for two out of three months. And uh, somewhere after about a month or so, I received one visitor. Okay. And, uh, and that visitor was actually a family. This family had to go through uh, getting permissions, go uh, enter onto a military base. And then to get into the prison, you have to go through a complete strip search, et cetera, et cetera, just to go and sit down with one of the prisoners in the military brig. And uh, this family, uh, Jim and Judy, if you're listening to this podcast, Jim and Judy, please contact me at dannynews.india at yahoo.com. We'll try to post that later. D-A-N-I. Yes, for sure. News. News, yeah. Uh, dot India at yahoo.com. Uh, because I've never contacted them since. And little did they know, they came in, and this is what they said. They said, you remember us? I said, yeah, you, you have that uh, surf shop right next to my favorite bar on the beach. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've been praying for you. And uh, just want to let you know that God loves you. And he has a great plan for your life. Wow. Amen. And I was like, wow. Wow. God <laughs> loves me. Like, what a loser. And uh, <laughs> great plan. I thought it was over. So that melted my heart. And uh, I ended up, um, you know, giving, well, bowing down my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and making a turn for the good. Um and uh, next thing you know, I become a, they, they have like a minimum, medium, and maximum security prisoner. They label you there. And they call you prisoner, so-and-so. Uh, and right. um, <laughs> so they made me a minimum security prisoner, meaning I had the, I had the privilege uh, to be able to go. And I had a job in the, in the prison. I cleaned up these, these offices, and I cleaned the hallway floors. And, I mean, they could shine. And uh, next thing you know, I heard, hey, uh, there's a, a drug re and alcohol rehabilitation center that a friend of mine was going to. And uh, he said it was great. And it was in Miramar, California. So uh, I thought, hey, Mir California. And I, I contacted my attorney and I said, can I go to this thing? And um, he said, yeah, let me see. Boom. He made all the arrangements and I got out of jail. Uh, one month early for good time, and I went straight to that place. It's a make or break break place. It's six weeks of, of uh, concentrated uh, focus on you. Uh, small groups, large groups. They have uh, great counselors there to help help uh, lead people up and out of whatever problems are causing them to drink and do drugs and and to be defeated and whatever. And, uh, and, of course, they had a good physical uh, rehabilitation program, too. Um, good gravy. Within uh, six weeks, they had us from walking one mile to running, out, flat out running, five miles a day. <laughs> walking a mile to running five miles a day. Can you believe that? I was, I was just, I never, I, I mean, I could jog maybe the uh, three, you know, three miles, you know due to the for the physical fitness testing you would have like every month but no my friend so anyways uh, that was my my step into the things of god and uh, then i started to pursue god i wanted to know him better and little by little little by little all the old lifestyle started to like disappear the pornographies the 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 drugs oh that was all gone and, uh, you know, it just wanted to clean up my life. I want to do something, be walking with God. I just start, started having that pull uh, in that direction. And um, so there was a period that, uh, and, and I got all cleaned up and I thought, oh my goodness, my life is new. Uh, 
And I thought, well, I'll go back to college. And I did. And, uh, and that's where uh, God led me to become a nurse. And I became a nurse. I was a nurse for six years. And, uh, and then I was involved with the uh, um, uh, Salvation Army. I would go there early in the mornings. And uh, they actually, they had no one there to help the people, no one there to run a morning church. And so they made me chaplain. And uh, so I'm here. I'm at the chaplain of uh, Salvation Army in a place called Prescott, Arizona. That's right. Two and a half hours from uh, Grand Canyon, up in the mountains, one mile high. And um, and I started going to feed, uh, to, to a place called uh, Church on the Street. We would feed the hungry mm -hmm. every Tuesday, Thursday, feed the hungry, the homeless. The, and a lot of them are hurting people, demon-possessed people. We'd pray for them, uh, all kinds of stuff. Some people would, would get out of their clutches of, uh, of that kind of lifestyle, or, uh, and then others would, you know. But it was uh, an amazing place, and I, I had the uh, opportunity to grow. And I'm just going to encourage any one of you, whether you're new in Christ, old in Christ, get out of yourself. Go and get involved with a church or a church group or other believers that are going out and helping people around them. Okay? You will grow. Uh, for example, I'm here as of one year now. I'm here in uh, Minnesota, a uh, place called Maple Plain, Minnesota. And... Um, and so I didn't know what to do. And I said, well, you know what? I do know what to do is I can feed the hungry because we do that on a large scale in India. And uh, so I began to feed the hungry on the weekends. And, uh, and then someone started gifting me like a whole bunch of eggs from there. They have, uh, you know, some chicken coop and uh, brown eggs. And so I'd make the eggs, boil up the eggs and make some, uh, some lentils, um, boil that up and make some sort of nice tasty soup. Hello, do you want to make this? Okay, no. Okay, one minute. And um, yeah, something came on my, my laptop. And, uh, and then uh, I make up a, boil up a bunch of rice, pack it all up, and I went with my daughter. Uh, she was uh, videotaping everything. And I'd go downtown, and they've got homeless down there. They got them down there now. They got homeless around where you are. And mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, there's people... We are made in the image of God, the likeness of God. We're man, we're God's highest creation on this earth. And, and I, all I know is that the more I get out there, the more I see them, uh, they, they don't belong homeless. They That's do right. not, even many of them, they know they, they should not be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And many of them don't, they don't know how they got there. And, and, uh, but we'll talk about more about that later. Um, but as I began to seek God, the Word of God says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. So I said, you know what? And I was reading in the Bible. Man, Moses walked with God. Moses met with God. Actually, God interrupted his life and, uh, and then revealed himself. And then, and then that attracted Moses to him. And he started to uh, meet with him like, almost like daily uh, or wait on him for days. And one time he was called up to a mountain. Uh, God, God said, hey, Moses, come up this mountain. I want to talk to you. I have things to show you. And he was like, okay. He settled his affairs. He told him, don't make another golden calf down here while I'm gone. And he started to go up the mountain, went up there. And there's the holy, the glory of God, the bright light of God. The, the cloud of God was there, the lightnings, the thunderings, the fire of God. And yet he tried to walk in it, and he, he was like it was a block. He couldn't get in. So he was made to wait there for one day, two day, three day, four day, five days, six days. And then the voice said, come in. And, uh, and I know mm -hmm. some people that walk with God face to face. I've met them and, uh, mm -hmm. in India and other places. And, uh, and one, one fellow said, God, show me that as soon as he walked into the cloud, it was like a, a doorway. He walked in and he was instantly in heaven. And uh, then he looked, and there was this huge angel smiling down at him. <laughs> and, then, and, he, and then he said, see, come and see. This is the tabernacle that the Lord wants you to make on earth. So please inspect it. Walk all around it. 
look very carefully at it because the Lord uh, of glory wants you to make this on earth. And uh, so I'm telling you, friends, you know, you were made by God for God. You know, before ministry, before your cult, you know, all this other extraneous stuff that we do to help others around us. First and foremost, God wants us to know him, to know him. Amen. And so we, we, there's no shortcuts. There's just a heart. There's a heart voice. If we start voicing to him, hey, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. First thing, he'll probably take you to his word. Okay. And his word is his will. His word is the voice of God. The word of God is God. Okay. But this word gets you also to, it's supposed to get you to the person, the author and finisher of our faith, the author that moved holy men of God on earth to write this Bible. Uh, he wants to meet with us face to face. And that's why he's recorded all these, these different encounters with people all through the Bible. Bam, 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 bam. And then he says, if you draw near, he will draw near. So, uh, sister, can you just tell me where are we on time so I can, I can make sure I'm not. So, uh, we, we have another, uh, 20 minutes and maybe you'd like to share how a boy who was, who had been a Marine, who went to nursing school, who was now you were in, um, California and how did you end up in, yeah, you, you, uh, you, after you went rehab, to rehab, you were after, in jail. Yeah. yeah. After How did you rehab, end up in Nagaland, India? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the thing. Uh, basically, when I was going through school and after school and I was a nurse, um, actually, I let all the things of God slide. And I went back into worldly ways. And I, I thought, well, I, you know, now I need a girlfriend. Oh, uh, no, I need 10 <laughs> girlfriends. You know, and it, it just went on from there. And uh, and I found myself in St. Thomas Virgin Islands, uh, and my new dream was to uh, become a uh, master scuba master scuba instructor, okay, dive master, and uh, have my own uh, dive shop, and then I'll be surrounded with uh, all my bikini uh, students, and uh, and that's the way <laughs> it's going to be. And uh, God has certainly called me to this place. And uh, while I was there at the St. Thomas. Uh, St. Uh, Thomas, uh, it was called St. Was it St. Thomas Hospital? The uh, the overseer, the night nurse supervisor, uh, she was from there. She said, "I'm praying for you, Greg Gregory." I don't know the accent, right? I'm praying for you. Oh, I'm praying for you. You're going to be on fire for God. You're going to come to. I was like, "Praise God, yeah." You just keep praying, and uh, <laughs> I'm telling you. There, there came a time where it wasn't <laughs> soon after that that uh, I, I read this book of this guy doing miracles and walking with God and another guy doing miracles, Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake. I read their books, and I was like, my God, my God, I've got to get off this island. You know, I was like, <laughs> I'm planning forever. I'm going to be there. Now i got to get off the plant, off this island. And I wanted, what did I want to do? I wanted to go meet God. And I read in the Bible, man, I was reading in the, in, the, in the book of Revelation. I read, wow, how this guy John on an island called Patmos. It was a, a prison island where they had locked him up. While he was on that island, bam, he, he said he was praying one time. Bam, the door opened, a door opened in heaven. And he heard a voice, come up, come up here. <laughs> And he started to see the future. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw angels and, and all kinds of uh, created beings. He saw saints that were, that were washed in the blood of Jesus, the people that got saved like us. And I was like, wow, man. And I was like, man, I've got I to gotta have that kind of encounter with God. And uh, so I blew off of that. As soon as my six months was done, I got off that island. I went running to some, uh, some uh, place to go pray. A retreat center, and um, and then even that wasn't enough. Uh, you know, I had a few, you know, short like inspirations and and whatever of God. But I started to, I found myself now in Prescott, Arizona, and while I'm there, uh, I'm around people that are praying for the sick, and then I'm learning. Okay, I want to learn how to pray for the sick. So Charles and Francis Hunter, 
uh, they had a whole video series. And I got to meet them before they passed over into heaven. And I got to meet them and serve them. And, uh, and I ministered at some of their places, uh, praying for the sick and all. Started having different uh, encounters with the Lord. And, and I started hearing his voice. And, uh, uh, and, and then I was like, man, I started to fast and pray. And I said, Lord, I want to know you. Boom. Next thing you know, he's like, this is the next uh, president of the United States. Fast and pray, 21 days. I was like, what? I just want to know you. I don't want to, you know. <laughs> okay. So I don't know that God, you know, God has assignments for us to do and things like That's that. Right. And I said, okay, so obedience is better than stupidity and sacrifice. So I obeyed mm -hmm. that. And it wasn't long after that that uh, I went to a meeting somewhere and three times by three different people that I didn't know, they, they just came up to me and said, you know, the Lord says, I'm going to open up a door for you. If you'll not be afraid and go, I will show you things you've never seen or imagined. I was like, that's nice. But three times it happened in the same meeting by three different people. I was like, what is going on? Little did I know that uh, God had a plan for me to go to India. I never prayed about it, never in my life. And uh, next thing you know, uh, God set me up with an Indian uh, brother who was my age, but had spent much time fasting and praying uh, on mountaintops, 14 days, 30 days, 21 days, whatever. Lord, give me India or take my life. Give me India or take my life. And he'd have angel encounters and different things like that. His wife would would uh, have same thing, have uh, angelic encounters and and uh, uh, you know heavenly encounters. And uh, he's my best friend now. So with him, I went to India, and we went to like so many villages the first time. Uh, two and a half months of villages way in the south. Hardest thing I ever had to do since the Marine Corps. And um, we, 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 we told people about Christ. We prayed for the sick. We saw miracles, all kinds of stuff. We saw demons cast out of people. And there it was uh, at the end of that particular uh, time. I, w I found myself, hey, uh, they said, uh, hey, let's go to this outdoor meeting. Uh, we got to see and be prayed for by Uncle, by DGS Tenekran. Who is that fellow? Well, little did I know, this fellow walked with God face to face, for, especially for the last 43 years of his life. And a very humble fellow. And uh, I saw the greatest crowd I've ever seen, about 100,000 people. And uh, thank you, I got that. About 100,000 people uh, gathered. And uh, he stood up and he told about the love of God. Then he would say things like, no, my Lord Jesus has come. And he tells me. So-and-so, you have come. You're wearing a blue sari, your dress. You're having depression. You were going to commit suicide. He started to call people out what their problems were, whether it's physical, emotional, whatever. Stand. The Lord Jesus is healing you. And uh, all these people would come and, and give their, their testimony, their story. Yeah, when I stood up, this, this power hit me, this, this fire hit me, whatever. I'm healed. Where I can see and miracles happen. I was like, what? So that got me more uh, appetite to, to walk with God. I watched him. I watched. I started to get his videos. I met him a few times. I know his son now, Dr. Paul Denikaran. And, uh, and this fellow, he shook his nation and the world. And you and I can do the same thing if we decide that we want to walk with God, nothing less, nothing more, nothing less. Walk with God face to face. And so periodically since I met him, uh, I've had visions and dreams uh, where he, he or other different prophets would speak to me and tell me a few things or direct me to do this or that. God, the second time I came to India, God gave me three dreams. This is your wife. And she was Chinese looking. And uh, in a short way, I'll just tell you that God led me to the Northeast India. My wife is, was there. And uh, and if you ask God for, you know, your heavenly partner and you'll, you, you can find them in the Bible. If you want a God fearing husband, Psalms 112, begin to pray Psalms 112. Lord, give me this, this, the fellow who fears the Lord. 
And then if you want a wife, you want a Proverbs 31 wife. She's a super girl, okay? She's a Proverbs Amen. 31 wife, uh, the one who fears the Lord. She's a virtuous woman, you know? Yeah. And you just ask that, Lord, and God will put two and two together. And then if you're not sure who, if it is the right person, pray, pray, pray until he answers you because he will answer you. He didn't want you to. He didn't create you to figure it all out. Okay. God Amen. To walk Amen. With you, guide you. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. God can do that. So we have records upon record of people that walk with God in this Bible and, uh, many of them face to face. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now more than ever, darkness has covered this earth, and as we pray, light is breaking forth. God will anoint us. God will speak to us. God will show us how to go forward. God will walk hand in hand. This morning, I got up early. I didn't feel like it. I got out of bed. I went into my prayer chair, and I just covered myself. I said, Lord, here I am. Show me your glory. I need to meet Amen. with you. I need to walk with you. And, and then, I, of course, I, I told them, you know, I need this, to, uh, you know, I need this Santa Claus, Santa Claus list kind of thing. And then I stopped that. I said, sorry about that. That's just a bad habit. I said, but, Lord, I want you. If that's all you want, God wants you. Okay, God will meet you in the name of Jesus. He's not abstract. Amen. Okay, He knows how to talk your language uh, and, and uh, all that. Okay, so God bless you Amen. in the name Amen. of Jesus. So today you can go to www.danny, D-A-N-I, dot org, dot in uh, to connect with us. That's Danny, Day and Night International, dot org, dot in, I-N, okay? So Amen. we'll pray Amen. for you. Thank, thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you, Pastor you know, G. I, wanna, uh, I, want, I want to just... Um, so in preparing, I, I asked the Lord for a scripture um, that would, you know, fit this episode and, mm -hmm. of course, fit you because it's your testimony. Oh, yeah. And he gave me Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And mm -hmm. I just want to say, never, ever underestimate the power of prayer, the power of planting that seed like that couple did for you, even the nurse um, that was praying for you to be on fire for God. And, right. you know, and, and again, as you said, he is not abstract. He is very near, very present. Um, don't underestimate the power in calling out to him. He will, mm -hmm. he will answer. And so wanted, Pastor G, wanted, yeah, go ahead. do you think that we just have um, four minutes? Do you think that yeah. you can close us off in a quick prayer? Yes, I can do that. And uh, it won't take four minutes, but I will just share on top of that from the same thing. I encourage everyone to read and reread Psalms 34, because in there, the word of God says a few times, I sought the Lord. Well, why would you seek the Lord? Because you're faced with a challenge or you just want to know him. That's right. But mainly, most of us, we hit brick wall, brick wall, brick wall, or don't know where to go. We're in a hole. We don't know the way out. Just like Joseph. I sought the Lord. He heard me. It may seem like he ain't hearing nothing. Okay. And delivered me from all my fears. Verse 6. This poor man cried out. The Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. Listen to this. Verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. God has power. To deliver us. And not just deliver us. He wants to walk with us. Okay. But he has power to get us up and out. So I'll pray for you. Uh, in Jesus name. And uh, I'm going to pray for a new hunger and thirst. For God. Okay. You were made by him. For him. Father. In the name of Jesus. Let a brand new thirst. You said. Oh taste and see. God. Make everyone hungry. For you. 
so that only you can satisfy them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let their eyes, their the revelation of God, open their spiritual eyes to see you because you're the only one that can satisfy them. We have beautiful things, beautiful people, beautiful uh, environments to look at, uh, oceans and mountains and all that on the planet, but nothing so beautiful as you. People, I saw him. Go to my YouTube, uh, wherever it is. Okay, it's on the YouTube. And uh, I saw the Lord Jesus Christ in glory the same way that Moses saw him. I heard the names of God. Totally, it'll blow your, your, your brain cells. My Father, help them. Help us all to walk with you, talk with you hand in hand, arm in arm, and face to face. In the name of Jesus, I break all stealing, all killing, all destructive forces of darkness against you. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor G, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. And everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and um, just God bless you all. Okay. Thank you, Sister Sylvia. Appreciate the time. Yes.